radioxanin yeah. emissions stemming from medical isotope production sites can interfere with the capacity of the international monetary system to detect nuclear explosions. What we want is what you guys will be doing here. Having medical isotope producer, the CTBT and experts around the world to sit together to understand both angles of this business. We're at this conference because we know there's an effect when there's a production of medical isotopes. Uh, certain isotopes are emitted into the atmosphere and those interfere with our ability to detect nuclear tests because the isotopes that are emitted are essentially exactly the same as a nuclear test. The isotope that is the most important for nuclear test detection is radioactive xenon. It is not the uh, local issue, it is global issue. You know, even I am Korean, okay. it is not the uh, local issue, but it is uh, in the world. So that's why it is important to you know, minimize the genome release from the medical isotope production facilities. Okay, internationally. Uh, productivity at the moment is um, about three. About one days. in three or one in two people so in Australia need the medical isotopes either for diagnosis or treatment of cancers um, and other medical conditions. So it saves lives every single day. At the moment, the driver is to produce the radioisotopes and help people, and the emissions aren't causing problem to the environment or dose to the public, so there's no driver to reduce apart from the impact on the um, IMS stations. We and medical isotope production people are doing essentially the same job. We're trying to save lives. For us, it's a longer term problem. We're trying to save lives by deterring nuclear testing and deterring nuclear threats from countries. The best solution is reduction of the emissions at the production point. The Nuclear Research Institute of Belgium is working to develop a prototype that will capture those emissions. And that's why uh, Belgium is taking some leadership in this issue, both from the Institute of Radio Element and the Nuc uh, Nuclear Research Centre in cooperation with the CTBT and the European Union. This technology will be groundbreaking in the field of capturing uh, xenon gases. We are working with projects with CTBTO in which we are going to try a new type of uh, material which can uh, trap the, the xenon in order to reduce also the, the releases. The project is the development of a prototype absorbent system that can absorb the xenon releases from a medical isotope uh, production facility. The way we do it is that we have first tested some different absorbing materials and we have chosen the best one, silver zeolite. This is the silver zeolite uh, material. In this uh, material, silver na nanoparticles are attached to a, a normal zeolite. This has a very high absorption uh, capacity, uh, seven times more compared to normal uh, charcoal materials, which are uh, often used in the nuclear industry. This is uh, going to be in uh, a trap. Uh, the xenon gas uh, from, for instance, the dissolution process in a radio pharmaceutical facility is going through the trap and is absorbed uh, in, in the trap. In this trap, it can uh, decay before it uh, gets out in the installation. We do the test in June at Institute of Radio Elements in Fleurus in, in Belgium. This could be revolutionary because this material is a new material which is optimized uh, for these purposes uh, and uh, is in this context uh, the first time used. We have all kinds of different existing medical isotope production facilities where there is no room foreseen for having such an absorbent uh, system. So we can make a very small system and we can install it in existing facilities. And that's also why the EU finances it, because we can then improve the, uh, the emissions of uh, all the existing facilities uh, nowadays in the world. The new technologies are going to allow us to assist the CTBTO in keeping xenon emissions low and so reducing impact on their, on their network um, as well as allowing us to act, actually be able to do it in a cost effective way. So it is a real game changer. Before this meeting we already collected signatures from six medical isotope production facility operators on a pledge to mitigate the xenon emissions 
At this meeting, we heard from even more, and now we have at least a number of 10 operators that take active steps to reduce the emissions of radio xenon. Some of them even go to a zero emission production scheme, and others reduce their emissions to uh, a very low limit. But, uh, we finish with uh, rev revitalization. Our experience the last okay, three years is not that expensive. If you are willing to do it, if you are willing to help the international community in putting an end of the nuclear uh, weapons and uh, monitoring this thing, it doesn't cost a lot of money. More and more operators of medical asset production facilities are ready to share their data on radioxenon releases through the stack. The scientific merit of the stack data is that the scientists can explore the network performance of the system and eventually the goal is that for every detection it will be possible to determine what part of the concentration that we observe is explainable by the known emitters. A lot of people actually, you know, want to have the world without nuclear bomb. Also, a lot of people need medical ice tops. But in that sense, international community try to minimize the genome emission. The excellent part of this discussion that we're having is that they're trying to understand the problem from all sides and use all the available technologies, so attacking it from all angles. Our aim is to see how we can understand each other, understand the emission, control the emission, but not control the production. They can still produce medical isotope by controlling the emission of xenon in the hair, and that's basically what we're looking for.